Pa, 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 pa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to... Well, if you want to use a memory palace to memorize song lyrics, that's what we're going to talk about in this live stream. And if you're watching the replay, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think is your favorite song that you'd love to memorize. And as we're waiting for some people to get here, we'll just uh, give some context to all of this. And, you know, if you're watching the replay, I know it's not ideal, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, hitting thumbs up, leaving comments and all that sort of stuff, and click that bell icon so that you get notified when we go live. And uh, it's really exciting to be able to make a memory palace, and uh, so excited that you're here, so hit that thumbs up, let me know where you are in the world, and we're going to get started. And the context here is that I hear my wife playing or singing this song all the time. And I just thought, I'm going to figure out without asking her what that song is. And uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to memorize the lyrics. And I didn't know exactly when I was going to figure it out. But uh, I found out what the, the thing is and so uh, the song is. And so now I'm going to just work on memorizing the lyrics. And I was sitting there already starting. And I thought, why don't I invite all of you to come and uh, see who's around? And I know it's not that ideal time of day necessarily for some parts of the world, but we also like to do things at different times of the day for the international audience. So if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are. This is interactive. You can ask questions. And uh, I'm really looking forward to su surprising my wife. And we'll see how far that we get. We need some tools. So I've got this. I've got this. And I also have uh, this. And we're going to encode the lyrics into the mind. And uh, all these things are going to help. And we also have the source material as well. So what this is, is uh, uh, a song that came to my attention thanks to Mandarin HQ, who put together a post on six catchy songs to help you learn Mandarin. I love singing with my wife. We sing Chinese songs together all the time. We sing English songs together all the time. And... Uh, the first song on this uh, <laughs> this new post from Mandarin HQ done some really interesting things with Angel before and really appreciate the work that she does. And the first one is the song that my wife is always singing and I, I just knew I would eventually figure out what it was. So I'm excited about that. And Batman might help us here. Batman might help us. So that's pretty cool. Um, and also, we're going to use the full powers of our imagination. I'm hoping you'll be able to hear this song as I play a little bit of it and uh, listen to the lyrics deeply and figure it out. And there's a number of levels of challenge here, actually, because I know a lot of these words in Chinese, but knowing words doesn't know, necessarily mean you know the order in which they appear on a, uh, in a song, right? So what I love and one of my favorite memory exercises is to learn songs in other languages because what you're doing is multiple levels of challenge at the same time because you might be picking up new words that you don't know before, but you're also picking up anything in a particular order. And it's more interesting than, than phrases. And you get phrases that actually are used in everyday speech. But it's a little more interesting because you can actually use it to tell a story or you can use it to express emotions or you can get a real sense of the culture as well and what's important to those people and, you know, all you need is one of these, one of these, and then, of course, one of these, and maybe some Batman. <laughs> I, I used to have this cup that I left behind in Berlin, and I should get it again, which uh, it said, uh, always be yourself, but if you can't be yourself, be Batman. <laughs> I always like that. Uh, I want to get another one. Um, but anyway, I love Batman. Thanks for joining us. If you're here, hit the thumbs up. Get subscribed if you're not. Uh, because this is this is what we're going to do, is uh, more of these kinds of sessions. So the song is, and again, now I, my pronunciation isn't going to be great. You can, uh, you can judge my pronunciation and so forth. But when it comes to this particular material, you also have tones to worry about. But the cool thing about singing is that it kind of hides all of that uh, in many cases. And you can just dive in like a child and play. And that's what these techniques are all about. So we're going to use a really personal memory palace in this particular case. Going to draw it out. Stick around if uh, that's interesting to you. Again, if you're watching the replay, get involved anyway with the thumbs up and uh, comments down below and your favorite song. If you're joining us, let me know in the chat what's your favorite song and do you know the lyrics for it and so forth. The more interactive you are, the better these things are. But uh, if you uh, just want to be a lucky loo, that's okay too. So 
we got the tools here, and we're going to get going. Uh, so it's Budu Bu I. Buddha Bu I. And that basically is being translated here as Gotta Love You. And uh, just so you know what the setup is here, we have the uh, Mandarin HQ site up and ready to go. If you want to join us, go to Mandarin. Dot HQ, open it in another tab. I don't know how that works on your device. I don't know what device you're on, unless you tell me <laughs> in the chat. But um, we're going to uh, to play and see what it sounds like at the beginning here. And start to prepare the memory palace. So, it's going to be a very personal memory palace here. All right, so it's a very beautiful beginning. Can you hear that? Let me know in the chat if you can actually hear the music. There, that's a bit louder. I love it. Okay, so Memory Palace. Yeah. It's very, very simple. We, we're not going to overwhelm ourselves. We, we probably need more than one Memory Palace, uh, or at least this might not be the right Memory Palace for this because um, it's got it's a very small Memory Palace, but it's very personal and because I love my wife so much and I want to, this to stick extra fast so that I can surprise her when she gets home with at least a little bit of this song. Um, but we're gonna go for, we're gonna go for the heart here. Uh, if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where you are. One of the things that keeps these things going is your interaction, and uh, that's what makes them so much more interesting. So if you have questions as we go along, let me know. I feel like the Bob Ross of memory here. <laughs> um, what, can we get more than a, a couple thumbs up here? Do you want me to draw a memory palace, or would you rather just uh, shut this off? Because uh, we don't actually have to do this. If you're just all bored and passive, it's not so interesting to me. Can we get some thumbs up, or uh, do I got to uh, wait for more people to show up, more true fans here? Okay, Juan is here. Saraj is here, yes. Where's those thumbs up, guys? Come on, let's, uh, let's uh, see that you're engaged. Thanks for saying hello. Um, really want to spread the message about these techniques around the world. Julie says, I want a palace. Okay, great. So one of the ways, here's one of the things, right? I'm going to get more pushy about this thumbs up and be engaged and so forth because it opens the floodgates in your brain. It actually helps you learn. And I do understand as a, a teacher and a former student myself, well, a lifetime student, Cindy says, yes, great. I'm a lifelong learner. And one of the things that I know from years of listening is sitting in the back of the room saying nothing is okay. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I wish that I had been different in university because there are levels of engagement that I never really reached and things that I wanted to say, things that I wanted to contribute that I kept inside that could have not only just helped me learn better, but could have helped other students. And when you help other students, then they help you learn better as well. So now we're getting to some uh, thumbs up here. Sandra says, yes, please draw memory pals, Siraj. Great. Keep those thumbs up coming in. If you're watching the replay, keep them coming and get engaged because it'll open your brain. Push yourself. I had the most interesting email from someone who said that uh, that they couldn't imagine telling any, anybody else about these techniques. They wanted to keep them all for themselves. And I said, look, that's not how this works. You're never going to ever understand how powerful this is until you learn it for yourself and then you begin to explain it to others. You just simply cannot learn if you don't put it into teaching, this particular technique. And I would argue that's the same with music. When I learned sitar, when I was studying sitar, 20 years to learn the instrument, 20 years to per per perform the instrument, and 20 years to teach the instrument, then you get to be called a master not before, right? And you can do those at the same time, but you're going to put in time to reach mastery. Memory techniques you can master by the end of the week if you want, but um, you've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the teaching. You've got to explain it to others in order to really understand. Because why? Well, because you'll understand what's wrong with your own practice when you're trying to explain it to others. And, you know, you just you'll see it from a whole different perspective. So I myself, in everything that I learned, English literature, media philosophy and communications, uh, different languages, different things, I always wish that I would have been more active and more engaged because I know what it does for the brain in terms of learning and remembering to be engaged. So hit that thumbs up. Alejandro says that, sure, you have my thumbs up. I mean, it's just a thumb, man. <laughs> it doesn't take that much effort. So uh, get involved and it will help you with your memory. And if you think I'm wrong, try and prove me wrong. Get more involved and see what it does for you, if not now, in the future. All right, so 
Memory Palace. It's, it, it just don't overthink this stuff, okay? That's the number one thing, is a lot of people, they want to get it right first. They want it to be perfect. Put that aside. That's, there is no such thing as perfect. There's only the progress towards more progression, okay? And it's, it's, it's really irrelevant whether it's perfect or not. What matters is that you're on the road, you're on the path, and you're unlocking the potential of your spatial memory, and you're using the Memory Palace tool for what it's for. And we can talk about what, it, what it's for. If you have any questions, start popping them in the chat box. I'm probably going to remove this uh, live stream, so there will probably be no replay. So, and probably is, is very loose here, but if you really want uh, to, uh, to be engaged now is the time. So this Memory Palace is in Beijing, and it's a, a really nice thing. And what I need to start thinking about is, how am I going to make sure that I don't leave myself into dead ends? How am I going to make sure that I'm getting the most out of this space, maximizing its potential, and not spending hours and hours trying to get it right or figuring it out, but currently subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we do these lives. Siraj says, I'm from Barcelona. It's morning here. I am here to learn from you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Siraj, for letting know, me know. If you have friends who you think might benefit from this, share this with them and invite them so they can join us. Um, but, you know, not, I don't want to go into the ins and outs of Memory Palace Christian right now. You can take the free course that walks you through all of it. But those are some of the things that I keep in mind. I keep in mind that we want to reduce cognitive overload. We want to reduce cognitive load to the very, very smallest thing. If you ever heard one of my interviews with um, Nelson Dellis on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast, do you know about the Magnetic Memory Method podcast? If not, check it out. It's uh, going to help you a lot just start feeding yourself this information because, you know, you're not, not going to get all the pieces necessarily at once. But Siraj says, yes. Do we got any more people who know about the podcast? Um, it's going to just start to unlock possibilities for you the more you dive in. A lot of people were being trained to just get all the answers in one thing. It's, it's a bit horrible what's happening on the internet. Everybody's being trained to think that, you know, the answer comes from one search and then you're done. That's not what knowledge is. That's not how it works. How it works is you have repeated exposure and you dive deep into topics. You spend, you spend time with them. And it's odd in memory techniques because you actually can do amazing things very, very quickly. But the real amazement comes when you con consistently feed yourself good information and teaching. And you don't do this thing of like, oh, well, th this guy's not talking about anything. This is all empty stuff. Like people sometimes complain about this. I don't know what the heck they're talking about because knowledge requires discussion. It requires development. It requires time. And there's something called redundancy of information and the 80-20 rule. And actually, most of what happens is in this 20% that cannot exist without the 80% of the redundancy of information. But we're being trained to like think that we need everything instant, instant gratification right now. Rah, rah, rah. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So get used to investing time into big topics because that's what knowledge is that's what mastery is and uh, be all in or uh, go home as uh, ja who's on the channel sometimes says home as he says is huge outcomes mean exercising isn't that great thanks ja for that one i really love it all right so you ready for this can we get a couple more thumbs up before we start to draw this memory palace i'm a little underwhelmed here I think uh, I think I'm I'm gonna gonna wait to see a little bit more interaction from all you guys. Let me know in the chat if you care to share what the resistance to thumbs up is all about. And if you're watching the replay, let me know down in the discussion below. I'm really curious about this. I'm really curious about it. I used to be that way too. I I used to not do that, uh, but then I got more into it because I understood how important it is for the success of people who are really teaching good stuff online. Uh, just to tell the robots we're being controlled by robot overlords, right? Like we have to tell them, oh, we like this. But uh, <laughs> it's important because those robot overlords are going to get rid of real information if it's all becomes clickbaity, la di da nonsense. So if you if you like people that you study from, like Mandarin HQ, wow, just amazing stuff. Like get involved, be part of helping share around the good stuff, and be more involved because you can save the world that way. Uh, it's not looking like it's going to a good place. I think the internet's going to be stolen from us if we don't start to take over with our interaction. So Cindy says, I'm in Australia. I've been learning ukulele and singing. Wow, that's great. 
I'd like to do some busking. I'm also starting an IT course. I need to learn memory techniques. Congratulations on all those things, Cindy. Um, busking is great. I've done some busking. I actually used to have a thing with a guy named Adam Cantor, who was actually my sitar teacher. And uh, we called it the mobile busking unit. And the mobile busking unit worked like this. It's not exactly what you're thinking, maybe. But uh, we didn't want to... Uh, we didn't want to do this usual thing where you're standing there and you play and you get some money, although I have lots of ideas about how to do that better. Um, but we, we, <laughs> we would just walk around playing our instruments. We'd walk through hotels and so forth, and people would stop us and say, come on, we want to listen to you. And we'd say, no, we're the mobile busking unit. <laughs> and we would just carry on. Anyway, we, he would play sometimes the, uh, the banjo while we did this, and I used to have an, uh, an air who, this uh, wonderful little air who, and I'd play that or sometimes just pluck at it and uh, we come up with the most amazing songs and some of the songs had lyrics which I will not repeat today because they're not appropriate for the uh, international audience of many ages but thanks for letting me know that Cindy really appreciate it oh someone's skyping me oh okay well um <laughs> uh, we're gonna just turn that off sorry for that little interruption but yeah the mobile busking unit and great to hear about your uh, IT course that's great um you know, there's so many things. Make sure you know the major method for that and make sure that uh, that you keep music part of it because music's so important. It's so good. So if everybody's joining us, I'm still waiting for at least one more thumbs up before I draw this memory palace. And uh, let's get engaged. <laughs> this is so, so painful for the uh, the replay people, but it's really important to uh, to start and wake up here and start supporting uh, these these things that we're doing because the robots are going to take it away if they don't see interaction. Oh wow, look at that! So Sandra says this sounds like a great topic. I look forward to the replay. Please don't erase it. I've been sick for a few days. Uh, okay, well Sandra, I hope you're feeling better soon. Um, and Dinkar says, start with a song, please. Well, if you're itchy and you're waiting and your attention span is that slow, well, I'm sorry, but we're going to start when we get started. But thanks, everybody. I think we're, I think we're set. Keep them coming. And uh, if you have questions, that's awesome. Let's get started. Um, but we're not going to start with a song yet because we have to start with the fundamentals. We need a memory palace. And we need it to work from the get-go. We don't want to be revising the memory palace as we go. We need it to work. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to think about just how many lines are we going to memorize, right? And how many lines does the song have? So what I need to do quickly here, and uh, forgive me if I'm breaking engagement by looking away, uh, but that's going to happen a fair amount. Uh, Julie says, I like you challenging us to be engaged. Yeah, well, I haven't done that much uh, because... You know, I have to find it inside of myself, but the internet is getting so bad that somebody has, I have to find it in myself. I have to find a little bit of, you know, Sergeant Slaughter or whatever to, to get things going because it's, uh, it's really in danger. It's really in danger. A lot of people are being hooked on what I call the meat, which is meaningless edutainment absurdly thriving on the internet, M-E-A-T. And it's been going on for years and years, and we've got to intervene somehow. We've got to get more engagement going on because people are just... Uh, they're, they're, they're being ruined. Younger generations, the things that are going on right now with the younger generations and, and uh, some of the issues just break my heart. They break it in, in a thousand pieces. I remember discipline. I remember, you know, showing up and getting things done and, and not uh, having a thousand excuses why that I can't be motivated or why this or that. I remember a world where we were excited and, uh, uh, there we go. Uh, it's just, it was just different. It was different. And now maybe I'm just reading the wrong news sources and so forth, but it just seems, uh, it seems pretty tragic what's going on. Uh, and I want to make a difference. So if I have to start barking about, hey, thumbs up guys and leave your comments and all that stuff, I will, because we know that channels uh, on YouTube and blogs and stuff like that, they're just going to be swept away if uh, people aren't engaged in them. So I'm going to have to do that because this is an important tradition that's been around for 2,000 plus, well, more than that. I mean, if you read The Memory Code by Lynn Kelly, you'll know just how long it's been around. And uh, it's memory has been always so important for human survival. It's been absolutely 
essential for human survival. And you've got to read the memory code. I won't get into it now because Lynn Kelly's work is so amazing. Make sure you support her work. Get her book. Get involved. Read these things. Feed your brain. Um, Dinkar says, can't start your course online. You can start my course online anytime. Julie says, it's so easy to be passive mediators. Yep. Sprack Arena is here. Uh, hi, Anthony. Letzte Woche habe ich dankbar etwas von dir aufgenommen, als du in einem Interview empfohlen hast, Kindheitserlebnisse über Räume hervorzubringen. Herfurt, Danke für deine Inspiration. Oh, vielen Dank, Sprachrena. Uh, das ist absolut wunderbar und ich weiß nicht, was es sagen soll, aber gut, dass du hier bist und uh, bleiben bitte und Thumbs up, wenn du uh, oder drücken oben. <lacht> Wie heißt das? Genau. Uh, ich werde mit meinem Deutsch uh, uh, zum Ende bringen, weil ich glaube, es nicht so viele Deutschsprecher uh, hier und Oh man, alle meine, Deutsche, alle meine deutschen Worte sind ganz unter dem Tisch gefallen, leider. Ich spreche nicht so oft mehr. Aber vielen, vielen Dank. Und for everyone who was here, I was just saying to uh, Sprachrena, uh, some things in German, basically what Sprachrena says is that last week I, I had a, I received a, a, something from me and uh, I, 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 recommended an interview and uh i was just saying uh, thank you thank you for being here i was saying thumbs up in german which <laughs> is uh maybe not the right words for that but uh, nonetheless i think they're they're coming and basically um Sprach arena is going through the uh the experiences of uh of the the childhood of childhood and uh thanking me for inspiration so but you are who inspires me so Keep the action coming, keep the comments coming, keep the thumbs up coming, and so on. Dinkar says, I think YouTube is giving good money. Dinkar, I don't know what they're doing, but uh, in any case, <laughs> we're not, this, is, this isn't about uh, ad revenue. Uh, I only put those ads on because apparently it makes the videos more visible, but I don't need uh, the YouTube pennies uh, that they pay for ad clicks. Uh, I wouldn't do it if it didn't think it helped the channel. Uh, so that's the reason for that. Anyway, Sprachrosina says, Versuche hier in Mexico mit Gedächtnistraining zu experimentieren. I wrote you in German. I remember you're understanding German. Sorry, y'all. No, please, bitte. Du kannst jedes Mal auf Deutsch schreiben. I just said, you can write any time in German. And he says, uh, he's doing some memory training, experimenting with some memory training. And uh, yeah, any, any, uh, anyone can write in German. I'll explain. Uh, no problem. Dinkar says, sir, make the memory palace word by word. <laughs> well, we don't make memory palaces with words, but words are involved. Anyway, thanks everybody for, uh, for your engagement and your questions and your thumbs up. We're going to get started here in a second, but uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> and I, I think it's a, an ongoing discussion we need to have because memory is not just about memory, but it's preserving human knowledge, and human knowledge is definitely under threat right now. And I don't want to be an extremist. I don't want to cause undue concern, but... Um, it's obviously under threat for all, to all of us that we need to start engaging our memory and memorizing lyrics is a great way to do it. So we're gonna get started, but we need the fundamentals first. If you don't have the fundamentals, you need to take the free course at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. The other reason why you want to do that is because if you're not on my email list, it's very difficult to reach you with some of the cool things that we're gonna be doing as the future carries on. And uh, we don't, you know, I don't own YouTube and how it emails you, but I do have a way of emailing you. And if you're engaged with those emails, you'll tell the robots that you, you like them. Um, and you like the emails, you engage with them, you respond to them, you, you all that stuff. This is going to be more and more important. Otherwise, the systems are just going to erase it from your view because what they want to do is show you more advertising, right? They're just going to show you advertising to the things that you like. Um, it's just really bad. So understand this we're living in we're literally living in the terminator world uh <laughs> in some sense um skynet is here skynet is here it, it's just watching what we do and the algorithms are doing all kinds of things and and it's going to do some bad things to human education so get involved and make sure you're telling the machines that you like stuff unsubscribe from everything you don't like and engage with what you do like break things down into the things that are legitimately helping you and just focus on one thing at a time. So if it's a memory, master your memory and go on to the next thing. So 
Dinker says, I want to say, sir, you can teach for free on YouTube if they pay you for ads. Ads are good. No, ads are not good. Ads are only good if they're based on education and they're teaching you something that's useful. Car advertising is, it does nothing for me. All it does is it burns electricity, which creates pollution, and it advertises the driving of cars, which creates pollution. And they don't even know that I... Uh, they don't even know that I don't that I don't drive. That's how stupid the robots are. They don't even know that I don't drive, and yet constantly. Now they're betting, they're hoping, they're wishing, and praying that they're going to get a return on that investment. Because one day I'm going to break down and buy a car, and the car that comes to mind is going to be the one that I've seen the most advertising from because of the primacy effect in advertising, and the recency effect. But they're wrong because the chances of me buying a car are so small, because of the damage that cars do to the world, and because of the damage cars do to memory. You learn so much more when you walk <laughs> or you take the bus or whatever, be around people um, and so on. Siraj says, I agree with you, Anthony. You are a memory guru, etc. Well, I'm not, I, I don't want to be anybody's guru. I want you to become your own memory guru. That's the point. And so uh, if I can help you understand that, you're already your own best memory teacher. You just need to meet other teachers halfway and you need to do the things that they say. You need to get engaged. You need to get involved. You need to actually take action, right? And then you become your own best memory teacher and then you can actually teach others, which is great. All right, so Memory Palace. You guys all ready? If you're ready, let me know. Now, as I was saying, we need to have a sense of how many lines that we're going to deal with, okay? So the lyrics in this song are there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so there's more than fourteen, uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So twenty. At least that's what I'm counting here. Some of them are going to be repetitious because uh, uh, I'm just counting straight from the list. But uh, if we're thinking twenty, that means we're going to want to have twenty magnetic stations in our memory palace, right? Twenty magnetic stations. So just to get warmed up. And normally when I actually get warmed up, what I'll do is, uh, they're in the other room. I get a deck of cards and I warm up with some card memorization. The reason to do that is we know in creativity studies that uh, if you do a quick warm up exercise, then the core exercise is gonna be a lot better. Now I've already memorized some cards today, so I should be pretty warm and hopping along and humming, but uh, I would normally do it just right before this. And uh, like I said, I was just going to get, I was just getting started to do this privately and I thought I'd invite you all to what I'm doing. Do you like that? Let me know in the comments. Do you actually like that I invited you to what I'm doing? I want to know if this is actually useful for you. If you're engaged, hit the thumbs up and uh, we'll get started in a second. But I'm really, really interested, interested in if this is going to be useful for you. Sprach Arena says, thank you for your your German Anthony great I wanted to thank you for inspiring my experiments here in Mexico to teach memory ready which was your epiphanic moment what, what, what which was your epiphanic moment to start your mission that's a good question actually why don't we uh, wait for some more engagement some more thumbs up and chat about that because that's a, a good question and you're you're very welcome and thank you by the way for uh, being in touch and uh, and engaging and, and doing this and uh, awesome that you're in Mexico where exactly are you in Mexico I read a novel once called Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry and I've always wanted to go uh, there uh, because of that novel um, but the epiphanic moment to start the mission Really, I used memory techniques for years, and, I, and I'd only taught them when I used them in front of people, which was as a professor. And what I used to do is I just, on the first day, I wouldn't do this with lecture halls because I'd have, you know, 80 to 500 people in my lecture halls. Um, and it would just take too long to have everybody name their name when, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to hook them for, for the rest of the semester, so you just got to show them why this is such an important thing. Uh, but I would have progressively memorized as many names as I could, and I asked them what their name was when they asked questions and so on. Um, but in my seminars, what I would do is uh, I would memorize everybody's name because there it was small enough. It would be you know, between 8 to 20 people and so forth, or maybe a little bit more than that. Um, Julie says, I do like that you are inviting us in on what you're doing. Excellent. Great. I appreciate that. 
Uh, Alejandro says, absolutely. Cindy gives the thumbs up. Juan's got lots of thumbs up. Dinker has a thumbs up. Awesome. Siraj says, please, everyone, come on. One thumbs up for great content. Awesome. Thank you, Siraj. So yeah, I'd memorize the names of the students. And, uh, and then I'd, I'd say, hey, do you want to know how to, uh, how to do this? And I would just to give them a little teaching of that. And then, of course, I was challenged uh, because I was in Germany and it was like, yeah, you really ought to like learn German better. And I had some bad experiences with it. And there was the opportunity to start actually teaching in German if I could pick it up fast enough and give public talks, which would be very good for my career. At least that was the idea at the time. So I remember I was in Berlin and I was on my Porsche. I used to take the train from Berlin to Saarbrücken, which is in uh, Saarland. And, uh, and I was on the porch one day and I was just like, I got to master this German stuff. I had a horrible experience in a German classroom and I was there, I was sitting there and I had this big fat yellow dictionary, uh, uh, Fremdsprache, which means like foreign language dictionary, but it was, it was what you call a uh, monolingual dic uh, uh, dictionary or a, uh, Basically what it is, is it, it's in German for German learners, so it's pretty simplified. And so there's no, very little English in it, very, very little English. And it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, Langenscheid puts it out if you're learning German. And I was just sitting there and I said, there's got to be a way to like just boost my vocabulary super fast. And then boom, the whole thing came in that moment. But it was still a number of years before I wound up teaching it. Um, and what happened then is I wound up not having any more academic uh, uh, jobs and I was basically on the brink of homelessness uh, and I couldn't find anything, right? Like I, I had three university interviews, this was back in Canada, and I was just, I don't know why I couldn't somehow, maybe destiny or something like this was like forcing me into a particular situation. And I'd lost a tooth too, right in the front. And I was just in so much pain. And all I could think about was how would I would, how would I would get the funds together to, um, to get this tooth fixed. And I was working at a school. I finally, I banged on this door, you know, persistence is everything in life. I banged on the door of a school, an after school school, as you might call it in, in uh, Vancouver, in Burnaby actually. And, and I, uh, I finally got the opportunity. I couldn't teach. I mean, I just looked horrible. I was in bad shape. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't really teach. And I, I wasn't really capable of teaching that, that age group because I was a university professor. But what I could do is create curriculum to, um, to help bring up this after-school school to the level where they'd actually be really prepared to enter university. And so that's what I was working on. And one day a teacher didn't show up. And Haiti, who ran the school, she said, Anthony, you got to help me. You got to teach these people and put me in the classroom. And so I looked at what we needed to cover. And I just uh, said, well, well, let's cover this stuff. And about 10 minutes later, we were done. And I said, now, what do you guys want to do? And they said, well, you're the teacher. And uh, I said, oh, that's right. Well, how about we learn how to recite the alphabet backwards? And so that's what I taught them how to do. And it, within four or five minutes, everybody was reciting the alphabet backwards. It was really cool. Um, and it, it, then I showed them some stuff about memorizing cards. And they said, could you write this down for us? And I said, of course I could. And so I spent the next uh, couple, couple days really putting together a, a book for them. And I just thought, oh, I'll show them how I memorize poetry. I'll show them how I memorize cards. show them how I memorize uh, foreign language vocabulary. And this became the genesis of my first book, which was just a hit. And I'll never, I'll never forget it. But, you know, seeing that it was like number one in all these categories on Amazon, and I just thought, what the heck is going on here? A friend of mine actually emailed me. He's like, have you seen your book? And I thought, no. <laughs> and he's like, boom, boom, And when I saw that, and I remember this, the kids, how quickly they caught these techniques and how they were so excited and, you know, really, really involved in it and, and just loving it, loving that you could use your imagination in this way, the way I had for years um, to, to really accelerate my learning. I just thought, I have, to, um, I have to really give this to as many people as I can. And I figured out a way. And that was my moment, really. That's where it happened. So I, uh, I really appreciate that question and I hope it answers it for you. Thank you for asking. And uh, thanks everybody who's here. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where you are in the world. And uh, 
And as we can see, one is uh, making connections here. If you're, if you want to let people know where you are in the world, people ask me all the time, how can I find other people who are interested in memory techniques? How can I get connected with them? One way is to be in the mastermind program and uh, in my secret Facebook group for the mastermind members to ask about meeting other people. But another way is just to use these chats to get involved and let each other know where you are in the world. Maybe you can get together and, and, and have a session, uh, memorizing some information together, creating memory palaces together, and so on. So Alejandro asks, Anthony, how often do you make this kind of live session? Well, we're trying to do weekly. We basically do weekly. Um, but that's, a, that's, that's the goal, weekly. And uh, Ada says he's from Mexico. Andres is from Costa Rica. This is a good time for all of you. So I have to keep that in mind, that this is a good time for Mexico. So how would I do this? It's 3 p.m. Australia, uh, 1500. So the, um, the image for 15 in my major method, major system, is a tail. It's the tail of a very specific dog. So now I can think about Mexico on the map and a tail smacking the Mexican map. Now, that might not be a very nice image for everybody in Mexico, but nonetheless, it works. And I'll probably never forget that now that 3 p.m. is a good time for people in Mexico. Oh, Geert's here. Thanks for being here, Geert. Great to see you. Really appreciate you saying hello. It's a good time for the Netherlands. Okay, so now I gotta like wrap the Netherlands into this. So my friend Seth, he's in the Netherlands. So, oh, and he was in Mexico a lot last year. So, uh, okay, so here's what we do. We have Seth in Mexico while this tail is bang and 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 bang. Uh, his home in Mexico. And Geert, you're going to be there also. Um, 7 a.m. there. Okay, so we can add this, right? We can add 7 a.m. is 3 p.m. What time is it in Mexico? Somebody let me know. Um, so... 7 a.m., so 07. Okay, well, Seth, he has this website called Positive uh, Psychology Program, I think is the website. And uh, he, uh, 07 is Oliver Sacks in my thing, because zero is S and K, or sorry, yeah, zero is S, seven is K. <laughs> and uh, so now I can have Seth from the Netherlands is in, uh, I'm just checking his URL, make sure I remember my one of my greatest friend's URL probably. It's a positive psychology program. Uh, so what we can do, yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, you gotta check out positive psychology program. I'm so excited for what he does for people with his partner Hugo and uh, check that out. Okay, so uh, 7 a.m. is 3 p.m. Well, we got time zones of course, but right now and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a dog smacking Seth's house and Garrett's going to be there, Garrett Yen. And uh, there's there's just, okay, so that's going to help. And, you know, we just got to do our due diligence and revisit all that, that stuff. Sprach Arena says, thank you very much for responding. I remember and remembering this experience. I'm still a beginner in memory teacher, teaching and it was very good to listen. Mucho gusto. <laughs> Juan Antonio. Okay, great. Uh, Ada says it's 10 p.m. wherever you are. Now, 2200, of course, is none, or 22, anyway, is none in my system. What What is it in yours? What's your 22 in your major? Everybody, let me know. Alejandro, it's 12. Okay, so we got 7 a.m. in Netherlands, and we've got 12 in Colombia. So 12 is, is a, uh, is tin tin with a tin cup. And, uh, so we've got to mix this in here. So we got 7 a.m. for the Netherlands at 3 p.m. Australia, at least at this time zone. Uh, and Twin Tin, was it? Yeah, so uh, we got to get him into that image. I wasn't expecting to do this right now, but <laughs> that's what these things, this is great about live, right? They can go in any direction. Having fun. If you're having fun, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world. And uh, so Ada still, I don't know where you are in the world where 10 p.m. is, but... Uh, in any case, that's, uh, that's how that works. And people often think, you know, how can you memorize times? Well, one way you can do it. But now we want to put it in a memory palace somewhere. So I haven't decided yet where that memory palace is going to be. But, oh, how about that corner right there? Um, uh, Sandra has none for 22 also. Excellent. Do you have a specific none? I, uh, 
I uh, usually use Mr. Bean dressed as a nun. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I ever saw him dressed as a nun, but maybe I've seen Roland Atkinson dressed as a nun. That's where that comes from. Okay, so we're going to have Mexico, map of Mexico over here, Seth and Gertian, seven. They're going to be reading um, Oliver Sacks while a tail is smacking uh, the whole of Mexico. And that should do it. So pretty good, pretty good. All right. Let's memorize some lyrics here. That was the <laughs> that was the point of today. I think I said we had 20 lines, if memory serves. And uh, again, some of those lines are going to be doubled, so we don't we don't want to take it too seriously. But we want to keep that in mind. We want to keep how much information we're dealing with always in mind. So I'm thinking that this memory palace that I had in mind is going to be a bit too small for the whole thing. But if you know how to reuse a memory palace, that's no problem. All right, so. Here we go. Everybody ready? We're going to break blood on this new memory palace. Why we want big piece of paper, why we want paper, all that's in my free course. If you haven't taken it, it's at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. You don't have to use paper. Uh, I know a lot of people, they want, uh, they want, uh, you know, the reason why for everything and, and they want multiple options and so forth. But if you want the best option for most people, it's going to be on paper here. Um, uh, let's see, that light's a bit bright. Um, Dinkar says, sing a line, please. We're getting there, we're getting there. Patience, patience, my friends. This doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen all that, that soon necessarily, but we're having fun. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Let me know. Okay, so, but there's real good reasons to be doing this. You're, you're using so many muscles, so many muscles. You're linking with your spatial memory in a different way, and you're not going for perfection. You're just going to get it done. All right, so, and using a marker maybe isn't the best idea, but I want it to show up, so I'm not going to, I would probably normally use a pencil. Um, so, basically, yeah, uh, okay, so, I'm breaking blood here. Oh, you can't even really see that. Hold on, let's adjust, let's adjust. Or can you see that? I don't know. Can you see that? Fine. Let's get it a bit closer here. <laughs> We're going ghetto here. These lights are not ideal for this. Woo! See, this is why I sometimes delete these replays, because things fall. <laughs> <laughs> and who cares? We don't have to be so precious about things, right? Uh, I might have drawn this a little bit smaller, but uh, Geert says, yes, can see. Great. Uh, so this is representing now a balcony. Now I'm going to start in the balcony. Okay, this is a Beijing apartment. And more over here, it's a very, very small, uh, small apartment. Um, gonna have to shift here a little bit like that. All right, so might have to make these lines a little bit darker. The lines don't really matter that much, but basically what we're trying to just establish is what are gonna be our magnetic stations here. And uh, there we go. Whoops. You know, everybody, I'm working to improve this channel a lot and get a better camera going. We've got a new computer on the way that's going to let us do this a lot better and uh, get some set dressing going on and so forth. But like Memory Palace creation, not everything happens overnight or in a day. You just work towards constant progression. And you know, there's some people, they, they have all the time in the world to, um, to complain and send me emails about how bad all this is and yada, yada, yada. But we focus on the people who see the good in it. And we're going to get so good, we're going to revolutionize the world. And I thank you for being a part of it. And of course, I am all about uh, receiving and responding to positive criticism. And if you've been following for a while, you know that some of the changes are all about that. Now, I know I'm a little bit close in your face here. I don't know why I can't get this to just stay still there, but uh, whatever. We'll have to just shift it around and do what we can do. But the teaching point here is just get it done. Get things done. And don't go for perfection. Go for pro progression. Progression. So now, when I was in Beijing and I had to make a little makeshift 
um, studio for myself to keep podcasting on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, keep making videos for you all and stuff and writing. I had a desk right here. And then beside the desk was a bed. And the bed was longer than that. This is just our little vacation apartment in Beijing. So there's the bed. Going to have to work this out better for next time, but we're working on it. There we go. So now you have the bed. And we're just going to go with that for now. Because I'm just going to work on the first four lines. I'm going to encode the first four lines. So I'm going to put a station here, which will be one. And uh, Alejandro says, thank you for taking your time to share your knowledge with us. You're welcome, Alejandro. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your engagement. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world. And Alejandro, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it's my pleasure to do this. So this is going to be station two. Apparently, everything's showing up in mirror. I don't know why they didn't used to do that. Now we've got station three. And then the bed. Now, the temptation is, is to use this part of the bed, which is where the pillow would be, and to use the foot of the bed. I'm going to resist that temptation for now because these are lines that I'm going to write in code here, not uh, individual words. If it was individual words, I might actually use every corner of my desk and I might use every corner of the bed. But we're going for lines here, which is multiple words. I know a lot of these words, but some of them I don't. So I have to learn them at the same time. So I'm just going to call the bed four. Now these are magnetic stations. This is not method of low key. This is not, you know, a, a, a mind palace. This is, this is a magnetic memory palace, so it works differently. Harvinder's here. Excellent. Harvinder, so glad that you're here. Uh, good morning to you in India. Let me test my memory here. 13 or 1500, 3 p.m. in Australia is 7 in the Netherlands, right? And yeah. Was there something else I was going to add there? Well, I remember a nun was involved for 10 p.m., but I don't know, remember where in the world 10 p.m. is because I don't think we ever got an answer to that. I think my memory is working good. I don't need to go back through the chat, but yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, and the reason we asked yeah, Sif and, and, and uh, Gary Ann are there, and so Mexico, uh, 3 p.m. was morning. It was a good time. We didn't actually, I don't think anybody said what time it was in Mexico. Oh, somebody said what time it was in Colombia. Did I encode what time it was in Colombia? Uh, no, I don't think I did. I didn't add an image. Oh, so it's 10 p.m. So thank you, uh, 10 p.m., Juliet, uh, in California. So I got to add something for California there. <laughs> Okay, so Governor Arnold is now going to get involved in this image. So we're compounding. We're compounding. <laughs> if you don't have a major method, none of this makes sense to you. But, uh, or zero, zero to 99. But it's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Of course, I wasn't planning to, to memorize these details. But California, 7 a.m. in the Netherlands is 10 p.m. in California. So we've got the nun. Oh, nuns and Schwarzenegger. Now that goes together. <laughs> right what else can we do with uh oh it's 12 oh right that's what it was the tin cup tin tin okay right that's what that's what we wanted uh that's why tin tin was there i was just like what is tin tin doing in there okay so good i'm gonna have to work this out here's one of the things that happens in memory is you'll 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 like skip a beat you'll skip a detail and you'll be like what the heck is that doing in there so tin tin was in there because of mexico right and I got to strengthen the fact that Tin Tin was there with his tin cup. Because I remember, if you if you watched up till now, or if you check out the replay and go back, I actually mentioned Tin Tin, but I didn't really meaningfully encode him in there. Now I got Schwarzenegger going on and California uh, for 10 p.m. at 3 p.m. Australia time, 3 p.m., 10 p.m. California, and 7 a.m. Netherlands. We're getting there, though. But this is what you can do. This is what you can do to memorize time zones. Uh, you just like lock it into one thing. Uh, oh, as Juan points out here, 10 p.m. is <laughs> north of Mexico. Capital is 12 a.m. Wait a second. It could be 10. It could be 12 a.m. in Mexico City and 10 p.m. in the north. Or is Mexico City not the capital anymore? Can Mexico be so big that it has such a wide range thing? I don't know. World geography, I haven't spent much time on, but this is the way that I would start to do it. If I was going to memorize world geography, I would 
create some kind of central place. Mexico may or may not be the right place, but that's what we're going with right now because remember, it's about progression, not perfection. You can always go back and redo. You can start from scratch and so on. But you work, you develop, and you get hooks that you can, you can work with. So we've got some hooks here. We've got... We've got uh, so, but then, you know, you can end, end up with complications and so forth. So doing this live is, an, is a different proposition than doing it privately, uh, where you'll have more time to, like, sort of strategize and so forth. And so, but it's still cool. It's still fun. It's still fun to work, to do the work, to do the work, to use the knowledge, to, if you can't be yourself, be Batman. <laughs> I always love that. I got to get another cup like that. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so Oliver Sacks is our, is our thing for seven that links us to Geert Jan and Seth in um, the Netherlands. And then the nun with the governor, or the former governor, I should say, Arnold Schwarzenegger, tells us that it's 10 p.m. when it's 3 p.m. because the tail smacking the Mexican map is telling us it's 1500 in Australia, 3 p.m. And then that it's maybe 12 <laughs> at this time in some part of Mexico. Uh, 12 noon, I guess, or it must be 12, 12 a.m. It must be 12 a.m. Okay, I get it now. I get it. I'm slow sometimes. Anyway, we can work on it. We can work on it. Uh, Sandra suggests, how about the nun with the tin cup? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, see, Tintin tin has the tin cup. So we got to think about what the nun would do with the tin cup that Tintin tin has to the governor and have it all pointing at the fact that the time in California is 10 p.m. whereas the time in Mexico is 12 p or 12 a.m. I guess and whereas the time in the Netherlands is 7 a.m. whereas the time in Australia in Brisbane time zone is uh, 3 p.m. So all that needs to be fleshed out and worked out later. And really the thing with the lyrics that we're getting to here, we're getting to, but having a lot of fun on the way. The thing with the, the point with the lyrics is you don't go for perfection right away. You go to lay the foundations and work to progress to perfection, right? Now, a lot of the times when you're good at this and you're in private and so forth and you develop the skills, develop the knowledge, you're going to find that you get it right the first time a lot. Uh, when you're doing things live and, and, and so forth, then the, the margin for error is a little bit higher, but the excitement goes up and it's so much more interesting. That's why the World Memory Championships are so exciting, right? It's because these guys are really putting, putting, the, putting the, their, their, their skills on the line, right? And, and it's really cool. You practice for that particular outcome, which is different than everyday sort of situations and so forth. But um, we're going to get to that. Uh, okay, so one uh, says, yes, the capital is 12 a.m. or 12.22 a.m. Well, anyway, we're just going to work with the cardinal hour. But um, if you wanted to do 22, right? So now you got 10, like if you want to know the minutes, then you could just use the same process. Um, and it's really great that way. Uh, but yeah, you're, sometimes, you're not trying to get 100%. What you're trying to do is get as close to 100% as you can and give yourself stuff to work with so you can refine and, and so forth. So um, we're going to go further here, but right now we have four stations, four magnetic stations. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Should the replay still be around, hit the thumbs up. And uh, let me know in the discussion now or in the replay uh, where you are in the world and what your favorite song is. I haven't really seen a list of songs from you all yet. But in any case, we're, we're, going, to, um, we're going to get started with encoding here. So Buddha Boo I. Budabu I. So um, we want to remember what it's called, right? And uh, that would be good. That would be good to remember what it's called. So why don't we have a negative station here, okay? Now there's a reason why I'm starting on the balcony, which is uh, available to, for discussion in my free course at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT. So if you're not... Uh, uh, through that course yet or you want to take it again go register and make sure that you're you're part of that because it'll help you understand these things gear and says favorite song 42nd street bridge by simon and garfunkel okay i gotta check this out um so what's your 42 yen in your uh in your zero zero to 99 i'd love to know um mine is uh ran which is 
to indicate the uh, the samurai movie, Kurosawa's samurai movie, and it's also the Queen of Diamonds. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Um, like the samurai from that movie, which incidentally ran is uh, based on King Lear by Shakespeare. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you've seen Kurosawa's stuff, but start watching movies and think about how they can be tools for you. But we need a zero station for the actual name of the song, which is Buddha Boo I. So um, I, of course, is love, A-I. And uh, so we just need to get like some kind of um, uh, heart symbol in here or whatever. Maybe, no, we just, we just come with what we got. I might just get a personal image that I won't mention because uh, it's really personal for love. But uh, we're going to have that and Boo Doo Boo. So basically what that is telling us is... I don't think this is a direct translation. The translation here is telling us that it's called Gotta Love You, Buddha Boo. But um, another translation is calling the song I Love You. So Buddha Boo I. And, oh, Garrett corrects himself, 59th Street. Okay, so, um, well, 42nd may have a bridge somewhere in the world, right? <laughs> um, but 59th, okay. I won't memorize the title of that one. You gotta be careful with us. And we gotta we gotta be careful with each other because that happens sometimes. You, this is a, another little cute little issue that happens sometimes. Is you'll hear someone's name and you'll mishear it wrong, or you'll mishear it, and then you'll say it to them later and they'll be like, "No, it was whatever." Uh, I had this recently. I memorized a whole room of names and I just told the guy. I said, "You know, I didn't quite hear your pronunciation. Australian accent is still relatively new for me, but it was like Dara something." And he was like, "Oh, he was really impressed because it was Darren." But uh, it'll happen, and you just go with whatever you got, right? You have nothing to lose, right? If you if your ego is so big that you can't make a mistake from time to time, well, as JA says, go home. <laughs> H O M E. Huge outcomes mean exercise, and uh, and part of exercise is making the odd mistake once in a while. Cindy says, I've been learning a million tears from the great showman for the past week. I haven't seen that yet, but I really want to see that. Uh, that's with Hugh Jackman, right? Hugh Jackman is in a lot of my memory stuff. So, boo doo boo I. Now, I'm not going to draw it here, but there's a lot of boo in, uh, in Chinese. And so I'm going to have, like, I like the blue ghost from... Uh, Pac-Man. So I'm going to have the blue ghost, which also, uh, it's not just that I like the blue ghost, but which ghost is closest to the sound boo? The blue ghost, right? So it makes sense to pick that one. And that's what you want to do in your memory work is you want to think about like what makes the most sense. What's going to give the most triggers to the outcome you're looking for, right? So boo to boo I. And duh is often for me Homer Simpson, duh, right? Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to have Home, well, I'm not going to get into the exact imagery, but let's just say Homer Simpson has a couple blue ghosts with a love symbol, right? Boo to boo eye. And that's going to be in the, in the zero station. I don't, I've never really talked about zero stations before, but now you know there is such a thing as negative station one or negative station zero or whatever. But often, you know, if you want to remember what a memory palace is all about, you can use a zero station. Um, good. So... Dinkar says, I came to know that Shakespeare's artists learned the dialogues word by word. How? Dinkar, that's a great topic that we're talking about right now. How exactly uh, Shakespeare's actors at the time did it? Well, there's some theories and speculation that the theaters were actually built with mnemonic images in them or mnemonic triggers inside of them. I don't know the truth of that, but that's been talked about. Actors have processes. Um, so, and it, it's all different at different periods of history. Like Chekhov used to help people memorize lines by assigning three, three different kinds of characters. So there's the characters who are very intellectual, who actually literally led with their head, which is a memory trigger, and people who are very emotional, who lead with their chest, and then there are people who are very animal, very instinctual, and they lead with their belly, and they'd actually physically walk with those parts of the body pointing forward, and... Even if you even if you watch some some sitcoms, for example, you'll see that the, there's a there's a type of character which is very intellectual. Almost every sitcom has this the three sort of characters. There's the intellectual type, and you'll see that the actors often they will lead with their heads a lot more. They'll move around with their heads more uh, out. So there's that, and then there's a, like a kind of baby character which is more emotional driven. Um, 
and then there is a uh, an animal character who's very gut instinct, sexuality driven, base driven after all these sorts of things. And if you think of your favorite sitcoms, you'll see that those characters play out that way. Some people call them the machine, um, the animal, and the baby. So if you think of, uh, and this is very useful for your memory tools, by the way, I'm not just going off on a deviation here, but when you know these things, when you know stuff, and really, really great question, I think it was from Dinkle, uh, Dinkar. Um, you're go I gotta remember that now. I gotta I gotta create an image for Dinkar so I don't get Dinkle. But I, I put something together there. Uh, and I gotta fix it. And how we're we gonna do it? Well, we're gonna put a car image with you. Okay. So anyway, the reason why that you want to notice these things and you want to pay attention to them and so forth about about how stories work is because when you know that a particular character is either the animal or the machine or the baby, then you have I additional insights in how they can be useful for you. So Homer Simpson is definitely a kind of, um, well, you'd think he was animal, but he's kind of like a crossover animal baby. And then the machine character is Lisa, and her mother is a machine character also to a certain extent. And then, you know, Bart Simpson's also sort of animal um, uh, in many ways, but he's also machine. So Simpsons isn't the best example, but you can see how it, how it plays out. A more clear one would be, and maybe it was from a simpler time, but the Golden Girls would be more simple. Where, uh, where the old woman is, is, is very much uh, kind of the baby character. And uh, uh, there was, I don't remember the names of the characters, but there was the one who was definitely the, the animal. She was always out, out for, out for uh, some sort of escapade with the, with the, with the, fair, with the, with the, other, the opposite sex. And then there was uh, the, the machine sort of character um, who had the gray hair and was the daughter of the of the mother. Anyway, so those they're they're broken down into um, into these different characteristics. And if you think about which role they're playing, sitcom characters can be very very good. We can go through them all: Cheers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, where you know uh, um, Woody is definitely sort of a baby character, and the was it Sam, the main bartender? He was the the machine very much the intellectual guy leading with the head and the heart person was one of one of one of the the bartender romance interest persons um anyway a little bit of a deviation but useful because that's what i'm thinking here when i chose the ghosts with homer simpson for uh boodoo boo i okay so that's where where we start always with the name of the song now for bonus points we could do the actual uh, artists, um, but I'm going to skip that for now to get into the lyrics. So let's go. Can you hear this? It's going to get louder here in a second. By the way, I'll post the uh, link to where these videos are. Okay, so Tian Tian. Let me see here. I will post the link for where you can watch these videos yourself uh, on the replay. Tian Tian Do Shu Yao Ni Ai. So I'm not even going to go for pronunciation. This is something fun that, that my wife and I can work on later. But so Tian Tian is every day. Do Xu Yao Ni Ai. Okay, so here I need to start developing this, right? So Tian Tian, it, it's repeated. It's the 11th. It's going to be 11 because it's first tone, first tone. Tian Tian. And so T. I always use a yen in a cup, right? Teacup, tian, and uh, for every day. So now I gotta get this over here. I gotta get this tian tian, uh, do shu yao ni ai. So do is also, uh, yes, uh, Cindy, this is Mandarin. Um, and this is on the mandarinhq.com website. I love the work they do there. Angel and I have uh, been able to collaborate on certain things at certain times. And um, 
she just does really great work. So if you're into Chinese, go to mandarinhq.com. Again, I'll post the link in the replay later. Um, but really great image starting to come. So Do is um, Xu Yao Ni Ai. Uh, so Do is also kind of a Homer Simpson thing. So we already got Homer Simpson here. Could we possibly, hmm, enlist him as our bridging figure? Hmm, I'm starting to get like PewDiePie here. Hmm, I need a graphic editor to twist my face every time I do that. <laughs> um, I don't have my PewDiePie cup here. We're stuck with Batman. So Tian Tian, Do, Xu Yao. So Xu Yao, we're gonna need, all right, Tian Tian, Do, Xu Yao. We're gonna need um, some shoes and we're gonna need the yeoman from Star Trek. Remember her? Ai, Ni Ai, Ni Ai. Yeah, okay, so yeah, maybe I won't tell that image, but we're gonna need two cups of, two teacups with burning yen, uh, with Homer Simpson, he's like spinning them in his hands and they're like clink, 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 clink. Tian Tian Do Xu Yao. Uh, uh, yeah, so they're, sh they're shoes tied to these cups and they're banging him in the face as he's doing this. Tian Tian Do Xu Yao Ni Ai. So I won't tell you the image for Ni Ai, but let me get it in there real good. And you know, you don't, you don't, uh, you, you allow your, you just let go of the outcome. Don't worry too much if, uh, if it, uh, you know, what happens later. Just encode and let go. Encode and let go. Encode and let go. Make your magnetic imagery and let it go. And just think, think, think about, you know, what you're going to, uh, what you're going to do uh, next. And just move on, move on. Encode, encode. Now, what I would do, though, is have a journal. Like, obviously, this is for demonstration purposes. I don't need to have the big, big old piece of paper every time. But what you would do is, um, and by the way, I had started this, but I thought I'd email everybody and see if anybody wanted to hang out. And uh, so I wrote down that first line here, uh, and I thought, oh, man, I'm going to invite you all while I do this. And I'm glad I did because I'm having fun. How about you? Is everybody having fun? Hit the thumbs up if you're having fun. Um, and uh, by the way, one of you gave this to me as a gift. So thank you for that. Uh, if you want to send me memory journals, that's always great. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, so then what I would do is actually write down what I had. So two cups, yen, <laughs> tea, uh, Homer, uh, the, the shoes, are hitting him in the face, and I got to get the yeoman in there. I won't really like. I know these. I know a lot of these words, but here's the thing: never be too sure. Don't be too sure. Don't be too sure. So I'm just like jotting down a record. Two sh shoes are hitting him, and then I'm like, well, okay. See, this is the thing that you discover, right? Um, and Sandra's asking, what does yeoman Rand do in your station? And that's what I was just gonna say. One of the things you discover when you write it down. You want to create it in your mind first. And then when you write it down, you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't do that well enough. Like, remember just a short while ago, I was doing the Mexico thing there. And the times, 3 p.m. Uh, here in Australia is 7 a.m. in the Netherlands. And it's 12 in, I guess, the capital we established, uh, 12 a.m. in uh, Mexico. And then 10 p.m. in California, where Julie is. I think I got that right. So, but what, what we noticed there, and I wasn't writing it down, and that's why I made a bit of a mistake or didn't get all the, all the stuff. And I may even, oh, yeah, there was something with 10 p.m. too, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, that was California. Why? Oh, because of the nun with governor. Yeah, okay, so, you know, like all this stuff. But the way that you, um, the way that you avoid the mess, right, the potential mess, is you, in, you write it down. So you do it mentally, and then you write it down. Um, to, to, to weed out the kinks. So I haven't done that with the Mexican thing, but I'm gonna do it with this lyric. Uh, because you're gonna test yourself against the record later, right? Julie says, yep, you got it, good. So, <laughs> like it's just a couple of numbers, right? And so like we don't wanna like over-exaggerate 
the accomplishment, but we want to uh, also congratulate and celebrate the accomplishment because if you don't use the memory techniques, it's just gone, 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 gone. And this is what we can do is we can actually hold on to information and we can do it really quickly. This took a long time because we were sitting there talking about it. But when I'm private in my mind, people are telling me stuff, they're telling me my na their names and telling me numbers or whatever might be useful. Like just listening to a podcast, or it was a video, but I was listening to it the other day. The guy said that Lenin died in January of 1924. I did not know this fact about Lenin, so I encoded it. I've actually not yet gone to confirm that Lenin died in January of 1924, but that's what he said. This was Steve Kotkin, I think his name is. Um, didn't memorize his name, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, who wrote this major biography on Lenin. And I was listening to him and I was like, oh, that'd be a cool thing to encode. Why not? So I just did it, right? And uh, we could point back to that video and see if I remembered it correctly. But the whole point is, is it's so cool. And it's great memory exercise also. It's just really exciting. And you know, sometimes you, sometimes you do get it wrong. But if you want it, if you really, really want it, the point here is, the thing to do is, is to make sure you write it down so you have a record and then you're gonna test later. How do you test? Well, you don't have this around. What you do is you put this away and you go to a cafe or you go to another room or whatever and you write it out again on some scratch paper and then you go and you check it against the record. It's so beautiful. And then you, and then you see, oh, well, I was off by a margin or whatever. And then you figure out what was going on in my memory palace there, right? So it's, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Does it take a little bit of effort? Well, sure, but it's worth everything because it goes really fast. It goes a lot faster than what we're doing now because it's all demonstration and stuff, pausing, deviation, cheerleading. Come on, guys, thumbs up. If you're just joining us, say hello. Like that kind of stuff, right? This doesn't need to take that long. In normal, in normal life, within 10 to 15 minutes, but well, yeah, I'd say between 10 minutes or so, I would have encoded these four first lines of the song plus the title within within that time if not faster it really just depends on the the level of complexity because this is in another language it's going to be more to the higher end of the time investment um but the beauty is is that the song repeats a lot of these lines so you know it's just it's going to be great and it's going to just totally my you, you know my wife she's no longer so easy to impress now i just have to surprise her but <laughs> It's um, it's a lot of fun, and uh, do, she's gonna come home yeah, about an hour from now, and I'm gonna sing the beginning of the song for her. TJ is here. Hello, TJ. I'd like to see one of these done with without the teaching aspect, just to see a master at work. Yeah, maybe we can do something like that. Um, maybe we can do something like that. Great suggestion. Thank you. Always appreciate your your suggestions, everyone. I really do. And uh, we do take them seriously. And if you've been around for a while, you know we're constantly progressing. All right, so two teacups, Homer, the shoes are hitting him in the head. Uh, we need Yeoman Rand, so Sandra had asked that. Yeah, and so then it's kind of like we're getting some pressure here. Why? And why is a good question? Because later you do this self-inquiry. And you go, uh, what was happening there? And why was it happening there? And how exactly was it happening? And that can trigger back the core information. Now... Um, we need your love every day. Every day, every day I need your love. Um, so I also need to add that there, right, on this station. Every day I need your love. Um, and so I know what, I know what, what these words mean. So it's not, I don't actually have to do the English there, but we want to keep it in mind. We don't want to, we don't want to get rid of it because when we sing, we want to, um, to interpret. We don't want to have to interpret, in other words. But Tian Tian Do Xiao Ni Ai. I think that's right. Tian Tian Do Xiao Ni Ai. Okay, good. So I think I probably have that now. And I can move on to the next one. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Shall we? So Woda Shin Si Yo Ni Sai. Okay, a Sai. Sai. Yeah, that's the first tone there. Uh, my mood, up to you, guess. I'll let you guess what I'm thinking. So I would write down the Chinese with all the tones. I'll work on the tones later. I often work on the tones on a second pass once that I've got the basics. 
because I'm not going for perfection, I'm going for progression. And also, uh, it's uh, one of those things where the way that one pronounces in a song would be different than in speech. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is so much fun. I, I, I really uh, loved when I was at our wedding and sang in Chinese. It just blew the whole family away. Blew me away, too, that, that under that high-pressure situation, I was doing just fine. I'm also looking at multiple translations of this, by the way. So here on the second one I'm looking at, 我的心是有你才才 is a, <laughs> I always have to look at these, these things, um, these tone signatures. I'll let you guess what I'm thinking on this one. And this one says, my thinking is for you to guess. I like my thinking is for you to, for you to guess. 心是 yeah, good. So, so now we got to go to station number two, okay? And we got to think here. So, order. So, let's see. Vic says, "We the people asking for a quick dab." <laughs> well, Vic. Uh, I'm not sure what what that means, but we're doing YouTube live here, and the way YouTube live works is we go as long as uh, as long as you guys are engaged, you, as long as you're hitting the thumbs up, as long as you're leaving comments and having fun. And I'm gonna do these four stations. And uh, if you want quick uh, quicker, you can go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash masterclass, and you can just get many many quick bite sized training videos anytime that you like. Um, but uh, uh, the, you know, if you want to watch the master work and all that sort of stuff, then the master class is where to go. MagneticMaryMethod.com forward slash master class. And uh, it, that's, that's, that's the premium, uh, premium treatment there for you. And if you're into this stuff, you're going to love it because we pull no punches in the Magnetic Mary Method master class. It's the real deal, the full shebang. The FAQ section alone, most people tell me they're just like that. Wow, the training is one thing, but holy cow, the FAQ section is just blowing my mind, right? Of course, it'll only blow your mind relative to what you do with the main training and vice versa. Um, and it is meant to blow your mind. This is meant to be world-class training that uh, you never forget once you're in. <laughs> you don't want to leave because it keeps getting better and better all the time. So um, if you want that, then then that's there for you. So Woda, now... So, wo as a I, uh, and de is the signature of possessive. Um, that's not a big deal, but we need a signature for it, right? So, am I going to see myself? Yeah, I guess so. Why not? Um, and then, shin si, uh, well, so shin lim is one of my favorite magicians. So, he, he can be there. And... Uh, He can be okay. So now we can have Yeoman Rand again. It's uh, evolved here. So, so um, I'm gonna go for me with Shin Lim, and it's C Shin C. So he's gonna have these C shaped microscope lenses shin lim c shape microscope lenses um with yeoman rand and she's going to be kneeing sai i know a guy named sai Just which side do I want to use? I know a couple guys named Sai. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So, Woda Shinsi Yo Ni Sai. All right. This is a, I like. A, this is the interesting thing about doing this live is I don't want to be boring. I don't want this to be like paint and drying. But in private, I would really be quiet. Really weave it in. Really weave it in do what I can, and then I'd skip back to the previous line, which, uh, I would, okay, so 
Um, so it's bo wo, uh, budo, budu bu I is the name of the song. And then what, what did we have? Don't want to cheat here. <laughs> and this is the challenge. I never do this live. Are you enjoying yourself? Let me know in the chat if you're enjoying myself, yourself. Oh, don't want to cheat over there. See, this is the thing. If you cheat, you're not giving yourself the memory exercise. So, um, and we got to find what that first word was in order to start to trigger the whole thing. So it was two cups of yen tea, yen tea, Homer Simpson, and then there was um, shoes banging his head. Shoes banging his head and... Uh, Yeoman ran, so Shu Yao, Mi Ai, Qian Qian Do Shu Yao Ni Ai. Right, now we're going to go to the second station, which I haven't fully properly encoded. I'm not really quite happy with what I've done yet, because it's not profound enough. It's not popping out of my skull here. Um, but I remember, okay, so now, see, this is the thing. You'll sometimes get it out of order, but I remember Xin Lin, oh, so Wu Da. Xin Si, Xin Lim, Yo. Uh, oh, now what did I do there? Yo, and he, so he was looking at Yo, Ni, Sai. Is that right? Let's see here. <laughs> this is fun. Wo da Xin Si, Yo, Ni, Sai. Yeah, okay. I think I did that, right? Um, I'm not going to watch my own replay, so I don't blame you if you don't. But <laughs> if you are watching the replay, I hope that's not too painful for you. Uh, someone said they wanted, Vic said he wanted to watch the master work. Uh, uh, it's a lot faster when you're doing it privately. But in any case, you got to test yourself and you got to test without cheating. So actually what I did is I had this here and you may have seen me look down, but I actually put this down like this so I couldn't see that page. And I was trying to remind myself to keep my eyes closed, but I wouldn't necessarily keep my eyes closed. And here's the thing that's that's known in the memory science and memory research is like later I'm going to go test myself on a blank page. The record's not going to be here. I'm going to go to a cafe and just chill out later, take a break. It's been a eventful day. And uh, I'm just going to have, oh, it's in the other room, I think. I'm going to have my... Uh, my little notebook that I carry with me everywhere, and I'm just going to write out what I remember. I'm not going to care whether it's right or wrong. I'm just going to write out what I remember, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to test it against the record, and I'm going to see what I need to fix. Now, tonight, I have the ultimate record, because my wife's going to come home, and I'm going to sing this to her, and it's just going to blow her away. Just, just look at the first couple lines. I'd have done a lot more lines if I wasn't uh, here with you all, but uh, hey, this has been fun. So let's carry on. We got for the Shin I love you. Okay, so now we have an English line. Okay, I said before I wasn't gonna use these other parts, but maybe because maybe I can cheat a little because I love you now is in English. Yeah, I might just stick it right here. Okay? So you can't see this because you're not with us in my memory, inside my head. But we have zero station, we have one, two, and then we're going to have 2.5. But it's not going to be a real station. I'm just going to stick it here. I love you. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at this. This next line is really long. Ho, ho. Okay, so, wow. We're going to split this one, okay? So half of this line is going to be here, and the other half is going to be here. Good. Wow. <laughs> this is going to be an intense one. But you know what? When your brain like makes you feel like uh, it's a bit overwhelmed, just recognize it. Just say, oh, a little bit of overwhelm here. That's a lot. Why did they put so much on the screen? I don't know why they did, but they did. But don't worry about it. Just say, oh, yeah, that's a lot. But we're going to get through it. We're going to break it down. Break it down. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So let's see how this sounds. Okay, so I'm just going to stop it right there. I'm going to need to hear it again. Jashe. Okay, so wo jashe yao ni rang. Again, I'm going to do all the tones later privately, 
um, and just work it out with my wife. So, so now I'm going to see myself just shay. So, just shay. Chinese is sometimes so interesting, but so me. I'm trying to think, do I know someone named Shay or Shane? Well, Shane, now I see my friend Shane. Shane, he always had such cool cars in high school. Um, ja Shay. So, ja, well, ja, I sometimes use um, uh, the Joker. So, me, the Joker, and Shane. We're going to hang out. And then the omen's gonna be there again. Ni Ram. Fourth tone. Okay, so let's have a listen again. Ni Ram. So I'm going to have Mr. Wrong there. Mr. Wrong, in case you don't know, is Rob Wright, who played bass in the great Canadian band No Means No. So now me and the Joker, Shane, yo man, ying, Mr. Wrong. Great. So I'm going to need to flesh that in a little bit, but I'm going to move on to the next line in here, and I'm going to need to weave that together. But now we have wo mei tian. Interesting. Okay, so they're using every day in two different ways here. Like, so tian tian and mei tian basically is the same thing, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so whatever. But uh, wo... So I just want to I just want you to make me every day all amazing. I just want to make it every day. Let's look at our other translation here. I just want I just want you to let me live an everyday joyful life. So these are very different uh, translations we're getting. Um, in any case, so wo zhi she yao ni rang wo mei tian. So, oh, it's interesting that we had Mr. Rong for uh, the previous thing for Rong because they have this song with Mei a character named Mei. So that works with Mei Tian, and then we can have Homer Simpson again. Jing Sai. So Jing is more like a Ching sound. This is a tricky one. Yeah, I gotta remember it's just She. So the Joker. The Joker is going to be smacking Shane into Yal, Yeoman Rand, who's then kneeing Mr. Wrong. Bam! Knee Wrong. Wo Jashe Yao Knee Wrong. I'm also not worrying at this particular moment about exactly how that it's sung. I just want to get, I just want to paint in the basics. So, wo jia she Yeah, oh, is it? Yeah, wo jia she yao ni rang. Is that right? Wo jia she yao ni rang. Okay. Now, okay, I think that's getting pretty good. Now we're going to go to Wo Mei Tian Do Ching Sai. Wo Mei Tian Do Ching Sai. So, yeah, May from No Means No. Now 
Now, in English, of course, you would think differently, right? Because you're, you're, you're going to have every day, which you now need to th encode differently um, than you would in, in another language. But that's okay. Um, and you don't want to mix the two. So, may, let me know, with Homer, but not with, that's just not powerful enough. We're just laying the groundwork here. With Homer and uh, Ching Sai. Because Homer is often, almost always, Do, right? Because you know the Simpsons, right? Do, Ching Sai. So, uh, Ching, often I use, um, uh, this ching sound from from these things, and uh, I see chi chin chong because it's just like ching. To just get that ch, ching, sai, and now we have sai again. Now we might use a different sai, just to distinguish the two. Ching sai, so and ching sai is at the end. Hmm, that's an interesting possibility. We won't get into exactly how that's going to work, but. Um, Okay, so these ones are these two lines are pretty challenging actually. Uh ni rang. Again, I'm not worrying about pronunciation, I just want to be able to yao ni rang. Basically you want the right words in the right order so you can work on pronunciation. And I apologize, breaking my engagement with you, not looking into this little lens I got here to uh to encode. I often encode with my eyes open, but you can do with your eyes shut as well. Um you can even do soft Buddha eyes. In any case, uh, um, hmm. Wojoshe yo ni rang. It's got to be ni rang, not ni sai, because it is, uh, it's the wrong, yeah, Mr. Wrong. And then the next line is wo mei tian. Oh, what did I say there now? Hmm. Now this is the boring thing where you feel like you're watching paint. And I feel like I want to talk instead of just letting it come. But uh, in your own private thing, you just start to think like, what was I doing there? What was I doing there? Um, and I obviously didn't encode it properly enough because nothing's quite coming to me. Wu <laughs> Mei Tian. Remember it was Mei Tian, but what was she doing? And if you just let it, if you just don't push yourself, it'll either come or it won't. And what you can also do is you can go back to the previous line. So I can begin to think of those previous lines. And I've had very limited exposure to them. I'm trying to do this live here. I imagine what it would be like in the memory competitions. I've done the memory competition. But nothing as challenging as what I'm doing right now. So I remember the previous line was Wojo She Yo Ni Rang. Yeah, I think that's right. Wojo She Yo Ni Rang. What's the previous line to that? I love you. Because that's, I'm not looking, but it's here somewhere. And then the previous line. Trying to think here. This is challenging. People are watching. Hmm. Maybe if we start from the beginning. Bu do bu I. And then we started. Let me think. It's too challenging when you know you're under observation. Fun, fun, fun. Let me see if I can get it though. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask yourself, like, what was happening there? What did you encode there? Ah, so. Hmm. Turn this over so I'm not cheating. Wo she yo ni rang. We've got that. See, this is the recency effect. Recency effect is working real strong right now. And then it was wo mei chen. Ah, yeah, tian, tian. Do shu yao ni ai. Okay, we got that. <laughs> that was like a long time ago, it feels like. Okay, so. Tian 
间，都需要你爱。I'm sure I'm going to nail this second line. I just need time. I know it's watching paint dry. I'm really interesting. I'm really interested if I can get it. Because this would be the primacy effect, right? You're much better with what you begin with and what you end with. Uh, and then the middle will sink out. So you, you want to catch the middle as soon as you can. And I know that the, the third line, fourth line I'm not going to worry about. I didn't really encode it properly. I skipped, I skipped a beat there. But then there was Wo Jishe Yo Ni Rang. I remember the previous line ended with Sai. I remember that was there. Qian Qian Do Shi Yao Ni Ai. Yeah, so this is basically what happens is you're going to have primacy effect, you're going to have recency effect, and then something in that second line is there. But I'm not, because I'm trying to think and be entertaining, I'm not really quite catching what happened there, even though I, I think I did a decent job of figuring out what it was. But if I'm just silent for a second, let me see what I can do. So I'm pretty sure Yeoman Rand was there again. Shin Lim was there. Okay, so Shin Si. Wo de Shin Si Yo Ni Sai. Woo! I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> it took a second. Well, actually, it took longer than a second. But see, this is the thing. If you just relax and you ask yourself what was there, you try not to get it perfect, you don't worry about it, then I think you got it. So, Wo de Shin Si Yo Ni Sai. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, so now the fourth line, we're not going to get because I didn't quite, uh, Julie says, bravo. So here's the thing, and here's why I wanted to do this, is because if you overthink it, if you get your pride in the way and you're like, oh my god, I'm live on TV or whatever you call this 21st century YouTube stuff, and if you get too worried about it and you get your ego in the way, you'll screw, you, you, you're screwing yourself. Um, all right. No, so I just cheated there because I saw it, Jinx, Jinx Ai, and I'm like, oh yeah, Chi Chi Chong. But I didn't spend enough time on that, and I didn't actually sit there and weave it. I remember I said, oh, I'll talk about that later, and what my strategy was, and I was, I was thinking about the strategy instead of doing the damn encoding. <laughs> but in any case, I think I did pretty good. I'm pretty happy, actually, with uh, with that. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encode that fourth line, and then, and then I'll go take a little break, and I'll encode it and test it, and then I'll come home and sing this to my wife. Um, but this is, I hope that you'll understand this, is that there's no risk in getting anything wrong. The risk is in not being patient with yourself and not just letting it happen. Just, and if you make a mistake, big deal. I mean, you'll, you just ask yourself, why? Why did you make that mistake? And in this case, I made a mistake simply because I didn't take the time. And I, I haven't checked that I got the third line in the first line. Uh, Tian Tian Dou Shi Yao Ni Ai, yeah. And uh, the third line was, um, let me look on my other thing here with the uh, Jishe. Uh, well, might as well do it now. Wo Jishe. Oh, now I'm getting all confused because of my excitement here. But uh, what was after She? Oh, Yao again. Rang. Wo Jishe. Yao Ni Rang. Right. Wo. 
where, where the hell is the line here? <laughs> I can't find it on the thing. It'll be gone from my memory by the time I find it. We need to figure out a better way to do this. I mean, I, I never really liked memory demonstrations to tell you that much, because uh, to tell you the truth, because they look like uh, paint drying on the wall. But uh, in any case, I, I always wanted to do one. So here we go. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I don't do that many memory demonstrations is because it is kind of boring to watch. Uh, Julie says, I enjoy what's happening here, Anthony. It's great to watch the process. It's not watching paint dry. Okay, well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> William says, not watching at all, Anthony. <laughs> Sandra suggests, could Chong be sighing? Yeah, you know, I do have a lot of... The Qing thing, I, uh, I still haven't landed on what I want my core mnemonic to be. I try not to fixate too much on like the right thing at the right moment. But, uh, oh, William, by the way, thanks for being here. That's really great. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world and whatnot. But the real thing I just want to demonstrate here is you got to, um, you got to let your ego go on these things because you are only in competition with yourself, ultimately, at the end of the day, relative to your goals. But I know a lot of people, they... Um, I'm just looking for a spot here for my book. They, they don't want to even be embarrassed of themselves in front of themselves, right? Who cares? It's just fun. It's just memory techniques, right? Um, so, and if you have like this real big passion that you attach to the things that you're trying to memorize, then you won't really care about that outcome that much anyway because you'll be driven by the passion. I gotta take a drink here, sorry. Batman needs to help me. Now, of course, we're, every minute that I'm talking, there's now the forgetting curve, right? And so what I need to do is repeat this a sufficient number of times in order to make sure it gets into long-term memory. This took way longer than it would ever take in reality because of the teaching element and so forth. Um, and because I'm teaching you this or demonstrating this, discussing with you, I'd rather say actually rather than teaching, um, but because I'm discussing this with you, I have the forgetting curve working against me especially fast. And I want to be, you know, engaged and in the moment with you. Uh, so if this were just names of people at events, it'd be very easy because most of those names will be super familiar to me. And I would just be able to mentally rotate them around while I'm talking to you. You'd never know what's going on in my head. But because it's Chinese and it's lyrics and it's a different proposition, it's not that easy for me to be sitting here um, mentally rotating them through the p patterns as I would in private if I was just walking around and so forth. But there's going to be a certain debt of, of repetition to be paid, but it's not rote learning. That's the thing, right? Rote learning is when I would put it on index cards and be like, eh, da -da -da -da, boring, boring, boring. This is very exciting because you're just saying to yourself, oh, I was Shin Lin Lim there. Like I was just asking myself, what the heck was going on there? Why can't I get anything? And then all of a sudden Shin Lim comes to mind and the rest of the line comes, right? And that's what's gonna happen when you do this kind of work. Um, now there's more advanced sort of stuff that you can do with lines that'll really help it sync a lot faster, provided you're not doing it on YouTube Live, which I assume most of you will never do. Um, although by all means, the more memory teachers we have, the better. What are you waiting for? Get these skills nailed for yourself. Share them with others. You'll never really learn them as well as you could unless you do share them. And, uh, and really enable yourself to, to get the most out of it by putting, putting, putting things on the line and trying it and developing that. And you don't have to start publicly or anything like that. But um, Understand the forces that are working against you also, whether you're studying for an exam or whatever it is that you're doing, understand the forces of forgetting and then work against them in a way that's fun for you. This is really fun for me. I'll never sit around with these apps and index cards. I'll just never do it. I want to learn Chinese the way that I learn Chinese. And I want to do it without intervention of machines. I want to do it organically. I want to do it this way. And so far, so good. Like, it's just really, really fun for me. And that's what I hope for you, if you find this fun. And I hope that you do. So we're gonna wind down here. Uh, I'm gonna do the fourth line, the the, uh, <laughs> the Ching thing that I didn't quite get quite properly because I didn't give it enough time. Uh, I know there's dough in that last line because I remember Homer Simpson's in there somehow. Um, but I want to really, really nail it. Uh, I think it was Mei Tian also. So Mei Tian Dou 
Ching Sai must have been the basics of it now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, not cheating, but I'm cheating. now. No, I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to confirm and see what that was. Um, right. Wo Mei Qian Do Ching Sai. So uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm happy. Um, if you got any questions or anything like that, or if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Watch this replay. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to actually leave this replay. Um, we'll, we'll see. But uh, what do you think? Should I leave this uh, this replay? Uh, <laughs> it's got some boring elements in it, I must say, even though Julie says that it's not like watching paint dry. Maricella's here. Well, finally. Uh, you say it's a challenge to remember in front of the public. Well, you know, it is and it isn't. I do it all the time. I just don't always, you know, say what I'm doing. And that's the thing, too. It's like, you're okay. Be cautious. You can go to cafes and memorize the name tags of people and never use their name. You can self-test. You don't, you don't have to do it publicly in order to do it to really get the brain exercise of it. At the end of the day, this is just so good for your brain. It's so good. And, and really, in 10 to 15 minutes, could have all these lines pretty much permanent. I mean, I, I, I would expect that maybe I might make one little error if I was doing this privately, 98% or so, but probably, probably not given the amount of Chinese words in it that I already know. Um, <clears throat> but this is going to get a lot of repetition because my wife is singing this song all the time. And uh, so I'm just going to, when the moment's right, she's going to sing and I'm just going to come in and start singing it with her. And then uh, it's going to be awesome. So I really want to thank Angel from Mandarin HQ for posting this today. And I, uh, yeah, it was just an impulsive thing. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do this one by myself. I'm going to invite you all. I'm going to do the whole song. Uh, I've done several Chinese songs. It's so much fun. We sing them together. And uh, I really, really love to sing in, in any language. I also memorize English lyrics, of course. And I memorize, um, I memorize a lot of uh, uh, it, it just songs all the time. And, and I just love it. It's so good. And there's a way also to memorize the chords with the, uh, with the lyrics. And you can do it both. Uh, it's... It's good to do with the guitar in hand if you can, if you're at that level where you can encode on the fly and so forth. And so that's possible. There's a lot that's possible uh, if you really get into these things. And uh, it's uh, really, really amazing what you can do if you just put yourself to the skills to de devote yourself. Ah, Cindy says, I want to memorize La Vienne en Rose. Well, I was just listening to that the other day, actually, coincidentally. I love that song. Very good. Well, it's totally doable. And this is how I would suggest. So to review, make yourself a memory palace. Get it on paper so you're not juggling it in your mind at first. And then begin to encode. Record down your encodings. Then go test yourself. And... It can be totally private to you or you can share with others, but I would say that you're never going to learn these techniques at the fullest possible level if you aren't sharing them with others. And when you're ready, you know, just put your ego aside and just perform it or demonstrate it or share or teach or whatever what it is that you're doing because it's going to open up so much more of your brain to understand what's involved in these skills and so forth and enable you to make an impact in the world that benefits you and everyone around you, which then benefits you uh, more and more and helps you grow in life. Um, so it's really just that simple. And I hope this uh, session helped you out. I really, really enjoyed hanging out with you all. Um, I hope you have an opportunity to check out some of the recent things on the rest of the channel. We had a nice um, testimonial come in from a guy named Lee Escobar. And Lee uh, came to me with a very big, ambitious goal with names. And I was so delighted to be able to help him out on a personal level. And, uh, you know, he just is one of those people who just takes the recommendations and runs with them, actually uses them. And I would suggest that if you learned anything today, run with these recommendations. There's this thing called speed of implementation. And that, like the forgetting curve, you're going to have things fall away if you don't reinforce them. And the thing with speed of implementation is if you hear a recommendation, like someone says the name of a book or whatever, if you don't instantly act on it, it's going to be very, very um, 
very difficult for you to ever act on it because the longer you wait, the less likely you are to take action on a book recommendation, an exercise recommendation, and so forth. You really got to just get it on the calendar and get started. So if you hear a book, someone says, hey, get this thing, then you got to go out and get it right away because the more hours go by that you don't, the less likely you are to ever. And there's these little chances in life where pivotal things can happen that really, really make a huge difference in your life. So if you learned anything here, go and do this right away. Pick uh, a song, Cindy, like you've already chosen one, and go out and just do what you just saw today and let it go. Cindy says, thanks, I have a little performance anxiety, so I should really get myself out there. Absolutely, it's just part of it. It's just part of it. Actually, Cindy, here in Australia, I, uh, I didn't keep the, the clip, but I'm, I saw an interview with an Australian singer recently who they were asking um, what she does. Does she ever forget lyrics on the stage? And she says, oh, yeah, all the time. And then I just make stuff up. Uh, they're my songs, after all. Who, why shouldn't I? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, if you're singing and you forget lines, I mean, who cares? No one's going to remember, or very few people will remember. And the people who remember, you know, whatever. It, it, people, there's people out there who are going to complain. There's people who aren't going to be able to see the value of what you're doing, no matter what you do. So you don't, you don't focus on them. You focus on the people that you want to help. And you just get down to helping them and you help them the best possible way that you can and just keep on focusing on them because that anxiety that we have and that maybe you have, I don't know for sure if you do or not, but part of it that many people have is that they've got their ego in the way and they're not thinking about the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is ultimately reducing suffering in the world, I would imagine. If I was going to go busk and stuff to entertain people is to reduce suffering in the world. And so you just focus on, on the bigger picture, the bigger mission, and you get it done and you really serve people. And you focus on the people who are actually wanting and willing and ready to be served and let the rest say what they're going to say, do what they're going to do, because that's just the way it's going to be anyway. You can't control it, right? Uh, you can't control the response of the world, but you can really, really respond to the response of the world. And it's the same thing with your memory and the things that you do. Memory is, what, is like breathing and it's like blinking. You can both actively engage in it or it will just engage you in it, right? So you can control your breathing to a certain extent, but your breathing also controls you, right? It just ha happens. Uh, you're blinking. You can get engaged with your blinking consciously, like I'm doing now, or your blinking will just happen on autopilot with or without, without your consciousness. Well, your memory is like that also. And so... You can take control of your memory. You can intervene on your memory. And instead of letting something go, like shin si, that word that is in that line, right? That I have shin lim, seeing yeoman rand um, there, right? Or the the shoes helping me remember xiao in this one line. And what I'm doing right now actually is recalling out of order certain elements to help <laughs> stick them in the place there as an example. But I'm intervening on the information instead of letting it slide by or say, oh, this is too difficult. And notice that I did at a certain point here point out, oh, wow, that does look overwhelming. And what it turns out is actually, you know, the hardest line was the one that I thought was going to be the easiest to recall, right? So if you just let your ego get in the way of things, you're lost. Forget your ego. Just go, go with it. Let it be there. Have the higher purpose in mind, and it'll guide you. The big tugboat here is what I want to do to surprise my wife. This It's better than any bouquet of roses will ever be. Don't you think? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a wife who has received bouquets of roses. But I imagine that I would not want any gift better than someone learning something that was of importance to me and demonstrating how much they cared because of that. And I'm fortunate to have that in my life. And I hope you do as well. And if you don't now, then there are things you can certainly do to attract that kind of love and attention in your life. And improving your memory is one of them because there's nothing better that you can work on in life than your own mind, the quality of your mind. There's really nothing better except for the quality of your body, which inc improves the quality of your mind or at least it helps improve the health of the brain so that the quality of your mind can improve. So it all goes together. It all works together. And so I've been sitting for a while, speaking of the uh, <laughs> quality of the mind and the body. Cindy says, thanks, your advice is useful. You're right about the ego. I think too much of what others think of me rather than the entertainment value I can give to other people. 
good good that you uh, are recognizing this, Cindy. I hope that I can see you uh, entertaining people very soon. If you come to Brisbane, let me know, or uh, I'm going to be in uh, Sydney in August. So uh, if you're there and you're on the street, let me know, and I'll, I'll come and attend, I, or I would love to anyway. Don't want to make promises that I can't keep. But at the end of the day, please, please, get out there and follow your passion. You, you know, there's the line Wayne Dyer used to say it. I'm sure other people have said it also. Don't die with your music still in you. And every single person has so much opportunity to nail these techniques and use them for good and use them to improve your life. Use them with the information that improves your life, right? It can be just information for fun that improves your life, or it can be so that you don't worry about your exams anymore, or it can be so that you don't, uh, you know, you can speak a language and communicate with your loved ones, get on the horn like I do with my in-laws and talk with them and just, you know, be connected and communicate with the world and the people. There's so much good that just compounds in value over time. The more that you put into the quality of your mind and the sharper you think, the faster you think, and the more you can do stuff. And then the next time, let me see here if I can do this. Man, I've been doing a lot today. But the next time 3 p.m. in Australia comes around and I get the hankering to uh, get on uh, the old YouTuber here and uh, do some stuff, I can think 3 p.m. That must be 7 a.m. in the Netherlands. It must be 12 a.m. somewhere in the Mexico and it must be 10 a.m. in, or sorry, 10 p.m. in California. And uh, if there was anything else in there that we had included, I can't think of what it is right now. But uh, I think there is something that I didn't quite uh, didn't quite bring back just at the moment here. But uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm not going to go through the chat and figure out what that was, uh, if there was anything at all. But I have a good sense of time zones in the world now better than I did and I think I got all those all those right 10 p.m. in California 12 a.m. in uh, Mexico part of Mexico 7 a.m. in uh, <laughs> Sandra says the wagging dog you remember yeah 7 a.m. in uh, the Netherlands and 3 p.m. in Australia or Brisbane anyway and that's at this time of year there's methods to figure out time zones as well, <laughs> but that's for another day and another another uh, time. So thanks everybody for being here today. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't already in the last second that you have to tell the robots that you like this material. And uh, if you haven't visited magneticmemorymethod.com, please do. Make sure you take my free course at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. You can remember that because it's short for you do. And it'll teach you some of the logic behind this. TJ says, aloha. Hey, thank you, TJ. Thank you, too, for uh, your comments. And Dinkar's here. I remember I added a car to your name so I wouldn't get Dinkle like I did the first time there. Um, really appreciate meeting you. All your thumbs up. Uh, I don't know if Gert Yan's, Gert Yan is still here, but appreciate you being here and uh, uh, also letting me know the time zone in, in uh, the Netherlands. And, yeah, lots of fun. Memory is so much fun what it can do for you to open your mind and the life of your brain to just interact with information and grab onto it and hold onto it for really as long as you want instead of everything just going over your head all the time. It's so magical. It's so amazing. And if you want to learn more, come visit me at magneticmerrymethod.com. Last week's... Uh, uh, last week's... Uh, uh, Magnetic Mary Method podcast was on binaural beats. So if you want to check that out, go and check that out. Listen to that. Love to know what you think about it all. And uh, the topic is really, really interesting because a lot of people are listening to binaural beats and weird other kinds of music thinking it's going to improve their memory. And, well, listen to the episode and see what you think about what I think. And that's at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash binaural dash, or, yeah, dash beats. And there's lots more. If you don't know about the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, then I hope you'll become a listener and a fan. And if you're not a listener of podcasts, one of the things you can think about doing is expanding your consumption appetite for long-form content to help train your attention span because we are being actively trained by the robots to, um, to just ignore our attention span. Uh, and shorten it and shorten it and shorten it because so many people are being trained and it's not your fault, it's not my fault, 
it is the fault. We all have stake in it. We all have responsibility with how we're behaving with the internet. But it's all turning into meat. Meaningless edutainment, absurdly thriving on the internet. So let's get together, see what we can do to uh, help all the good teachers out there with our thumbs up, guys, and our uh, comments on posts and so forth, because that is seems more and more what's going to help them get to the top of the search engines uh, uh, in some sense. And whatever. We have no control, really, at the end of the day over what's going to come unless that we step up and get involved and engaged and keep on telling the machines what we like and what we want to see and not just leaving it to to their corporate interest, okay? So thanks for your support on that. Cindy says they should teach memory and study techniques in school. Yeah, uh, agreed, but at the end of the day, I think my message is a little bit different, which is that parents should learn these techniques and demonstrate them to their children. Don't leave it to mama government and schools and all that jazz. Do it yourself for your kids. Do it for your, set, for your own community. You can go and learn these techniques and go and teach them in the school, right? Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to do? Wouldn't that be so good if you would just go out and teach these techniques to kids in schools? Don't leave it to the schools to do it, right? They're not even really teaching good information half the time by what I hear. Uh, I don't know, but at the end of the day, we are the ones who need to take responsibility for the kids, not leave it to, not leave it to institutions. You think those institutions care? Well, maybe, maybe a little bit. Um, I'm not sure that they don't care, but everyone's got a vested interest. Everybody's fighting for whatever they're fighting for, and we can't trust that they are fighting for us, right? But we can fight for us. We can fight for us. TJ says, definitely want to teach my daughter's memory techniques. Chen Hao. Good. Excellent. Wunderbar. Uh, please, please do do that. And you know what? You can plant a seed now that will grow later. So if it now isn't the right time, well, you know, plant a seed and it, it may come up later. And TJ, just so you know, there are three episodes on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast about this topic for teaching memory techniques to kids. I don't myself uh, teach memory techniques to kids uh, because I don't have any and I don't have any experience with that. But I have two parents who do on the show. Very, very inspiring what they did. I have a third one with some general tips. And actually, now that I think about it, Brad's up. Uh, I have a review of one of his books, and I have him on the show to talk about that. So there's lots of material about that in a secondary way on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast that you can get into with ideas and tips and strategies and a general philosophy of where, why, how, what, and when of teaching memory techniques in schools. Because the truth is, is that memory techniques are taught in schools or in some schools, but in very bad ways, weak ways, ineffective ways, non-dedicated ways, and we need to really, really think about what we're going to do as individuals who care about the future of our planet, who care about our immediate communities, who care about ourselves. Do it for yourself at the end of the day, and it'll automatically flow through. Maricella says, I share with students and teachers the Magnetic Mary Method. Awesome, Maricella. That heartens me so much to hear. Keep doing so. And again, everybody, I thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate each and every moment that we get to spend together and come visit me on magneticmerrymethod.com. Make sure you're subscribed because that's one of the best ways to get in touch and be in touch and be in the loop about everything. Garrett Yan says, thanks, Anthony. Lost connection for a while. Sorry about that. Juan says, I will start. Thumbs up back to you, Juan. I really, uh, I have a hard time getting off these calls because they're so much fun. But until, thanks, Dinkar. Until we have a chance to speak again, come visit me at magneticmerrymethod.com and always, always keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks again. Take care.